Yeah, OK. So uh, as a lot of you would probably uh, recognize this. This is Astro Amada that's in ArtCorp, which you probably know from when we released the social module. And one of our challenges is that you know, the new paradigm of Star Citizen is you can go to all these planets, you can explore all the planets. We're not just going to have a cutscene to go down to the surface and have a very limited landing area. So the old ArtCorp, you basically were in a sort of well-detailed first-person first small level, and everything outside of it was sort of a, you know, kind of this, you know, it was sort of, it was basically faked. Um, and in the new way, new planetary tech, we can't. So here we are in Astro Amada. Um, the Ravens there, which is the, uh, you know, the spaceship that goes with the Optae. And uh, beyond 3.0, we're going to let you, we're going to add the ability to buy or lease ships. Uh, so that would be, you know, the first place you're probably doing that would actually be on Art Corp in the Astro Amada store. And uh, of course, you're also seeing some level of our subsumption AI going on, which is also something we're continually working on improving. And next year, uh, it will be even more self-aware. Right, let's uh, head out. OK, so we've got a bit bigger. The big difference with ArtCorp that we have now is that uh, there isn't really a skybox. Everything is real. So, well, not real, it's, well, it's digital, but it's there. It's a digital, digital uh, thing. So let's, uh, let's just head through the main uh, plaza of uh, Area 18 here in ArtCorp, which, uh, you, like I said, you guys will have known from the social module, although it's quite a bit different than it was in terms of scope, scale. Obviously, you can see a lot of the uh, advertising and uh, vibe stuff. But let's head out through the customs. You're clear. Move along. All right, let's go. So everyone's in a line, as always, if you're going anywhere to get through uh, immigration. Here we go, uh, the main flying pass. So, yeah, very Blade Runner-esque, we got going. This is a Terrapin, uh, which uh, again uh, isn't in 3.0, but is um, going to be just after 3.0. Although I think we should probably, Glenn, shouldn't really, let's, let's start the, the small amount, right? The new Aurora, perhaps. <laughs> Welcome to Robert Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. Engines are on. All right, let's, let's take, let's take off. Let's do a flag.
not sure we're going to let you actually get this close to the populated areas, but we let you guys do it. <laughs> seeing here is Art Corp, uh, which is essentially a, you know, a, a full-size, Earth-sized planet completely covered with man-made structures and at a real scale. So you're seeing everything to the horizon, uh, fully covered. Uh, you can basically fly all over Art Corp. And you can see up in the distance another city club. So that up in the distance is area area 17, and we're flying over the suburbs now. So this is pretty much Coruscant. And this is this is uh, our engine wizard engine wizards in, in the Frankfurt office. Uh, who's doing this? So, Mar Marco Cabrera and Alex Ramati, who will be out here in a bit. And actually, area um, 17 over there is about 25 kilometers in the distance. So, we'll just kind of. Kind of head over to it. bigger, more populated planets, multiple uh, landing zones. So Area 18 is one of them. Area 17 would be potentially another one. And we'd have quite a few around our club because it's such a big planet and the detail and the scale that we're going for. Uh, we sort of feel like it has to be more than just one landing zone or two landing zones and then nothing else on the rest of the planet. So it has to feel believable at the scale of our universe. And that's always quite a challenge, but some of the technology that we've been building is allowing us to do that, as you can sort of see from uh, the visuals that we're flying around here, where we literally have a planet covered by a city.
Alright, so uh, Arcorp is one of our planets. Let's uh, gonna head up to space, I think, here in a bit, Glenn. We can have a little view of Area 17 as we go beside it, though. I don't think any other game has quite got this level of scale. up there is actually the pyro system so when we leave Stanton that will be one of our destinations and you sort of see yeah. Don't worry, we're working hard on it for you guys. stations in orbit around Arcorp. So I think I mentioned before that most of the big uh, kind of more advanced or settled or uh, industrialized planets have quite a, will have quite a few space stations in geosynchronous orbit so that when uh, say someone with a, a large ship like a hull C or a D brings in cargo, you go to the space station and then the cargo can be offloaded and brought down to the planet. Um, so we're just going to head to one of them. It's built using a, a new modular space station uh, setup. Uh, and uh, it's actually beyond 3.0, you're going to see a lot of space stations and variety. And we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to put them together and build them up in around the Stanton system and the other systems as we expand out. And the key is it's all, you know, we're, we're not low. There's, you know, there's no loading screens or anything. It's, we just flew up from the city. We were down in Area 18. Then we were flying around these huge skyscrapers, and now we're just heading up to the orbital uh, space station. Glenn's just showing off. This would be, like I said, one of the places where cargo would come in, it would be unloaded, and then there would be NPCs or a player could potentially take some more amounts down. So to give you an idea of this is, you know, the beauty of the sort of Star Citizen 64-bit precision is like we fully, fully, you know, it's all there. We're up here on a space station looking down on the planet. Jump? I don't know, Glenn. Should we jump or not jump? Nah, I don't think so, right?
right, let's get back on the platform. Well, right, no, his, his, uh, his EVA counters the gravity. Plus, gravity is much weaker up here than it's down on the planet. But the gravity is actually properly simulated all the way through, based on your distance from the center of the planet. You want to get up? Ooh. All right. So inside, in, inside these, these are all uh, got interiors, and in fact, um, we'll we'll show you kind of how we build them in a in a second. Uh, but yeah, just give you the idea of the scale, because you know this space station didn't look that big from a while ago, and of course, see how big it is now that we're up close. Uh, and if we go through here, there'll be uh, an elevator we get through on the other side that would get us into the, the atrium. So we'll show you a bit of that in a little bit. Um, let's uh, let's kind of continue on with our journey. No, it doesn't look very big. That's because we're sort of zoomed uh, out on the star map. But Lawville is 23 million 205,500, whatever that is, 968, 66 now, uh, 68 kilometers away, uh, which is quite a long distance. So should we start our quantum? We've upgraded the, uh, the the whole sort of jump effects and everything using the new GPU particle system that's coming in with 3.0. Yeah, again, yeah, another thing that we've added, which you can see with the con trails and the engine trails. Now, 23 million kilometers, even at point two of the speed of light, takes about eight minutes. Now, and actually, in the gameplay side of things, it probably would actually take you longer for the journey because you probably get pulled out of quantum by you know some other ships, or and there'll be probably we won't probably let you go one jump directly to the other jump because there needs to be some time invested in getting there like taking cargo or whatever else uh, but just a pure and old they did uninterrupted jumps about eight minutes at our quantum speed so while we're doing that we're going to take a little bit of time to reflect back on the tech that you saw uh, on uh, on display so Sean you want to come to the stage and uh, Alex Ramati is one of the uh, key people our procedural tech uh, and I'll hand it over to them to sort of talk about what you, how we built some of the stuff you just saw. <coughs> All right, hi there, everyone. So for those that don't know me, my name's Sean Tracy. I'm the tech director of content here at Cloud Imperium Games. And up here on stage with me is one of the bright minds behind some of the content that you saw there in Area 18 and R Corp, and behind some of the tools, um, and his name's Alex Ramadi. He's our lead technical artist at Cloud Imperium Games. <laughs> 
So, figured while we're on our way to Hurston that we'd kind of show you a little bit about the tools and uh, basically how we're going to go about filling, you know, hundreds of systems with just as many planets with, you know, meaningful content and uh, things to do for you guys. Um, and the way we're going to do that is through super powerful tools, really talented art teams, really powerful and uh, hyper intelligent engineers. So we're going to have to go picture in picture here for a minute. All right. So go ahead, run the tools. All right, so the first one I want to talk a little bit about is our procedural city generator. So here, uh, it's a top-down sort of tool that we've built for the artists and the designers. And what they basically do, they draw the perimeters of all their districts. Now, I realize it looks a little bit about like Minesweeper or um, even like a SimCity kind of look, but actually, it, that's a really nice interface to this kind of thing. So you see what he's actually done here is all the T's are little transportation districts and all the little yellow H's are actually an elevated area. So these are different districts with different properties within them. And it's important that all those districts connect to each other because of course, if we've got NPCs living there, uh, that's gonna be an important point. Then we hit fill the city layout and this is when all the models and everything starts to get propagated. But I should mention, it's, it's not just models, it's particle effects, it's NPCs, it's shops, it's signs, it's all kinds of different content that really make the game for you. The other important part of it is of being able to set you know, the actual districts. So it's things like commercial, residential, industrial, and you might have heard of these before. Um, and he sets different heights. These ones are suburban areas, or suburb areas. And this is where you know, the NPCs will live. It'll be different habitation sort of areas. And then we hit save city layout, and we've got our city. So, uh, it's really exciting tool set. And again, this comes from lots of artwork and really, really, really intelligent engineers. So you can see that in the distance is our elevated area. We've got a sort of industrial area that's been built up. You've got the signs, you've got the shops. Um, yeah, and you could even see before when it was a little uh, higher up that there's transportation between all of these districts. So you can still move around between and that could be monorails, that could be roads, that could be whatever uh, you know, the artists actually come up with or design rather, they come up with it. So as he flies around, you can see that this was more the commercial kind of area. This is where you'd find some of your shops, things like Dumper's Depot. And then over here was that sort of suburb area that he actually built up. So again, it's a really powerful tool set, but it's really only one piece of the puzzle. So the next piece of that puzzle is building up the interiors to this. So keeping that same concept in mind, we load up a different tool set. And this one is called, we call it our layout editor. So this is our interior layout editor and it can be used for all kinds of things. So here is our data forge editor. You might've seen this on ATV before. And this is where we set up all our, you know, real meaningful data. So these are different libraries that are used. But for the artists and designers, what they actually use is a flow graph system. And each of those boxes or nodes are actually rooms. And each of the connections are hallways or doors or elevators and things like this. And you can see that all the rooms are connected in a, in a certain way and in a meaningful gameplay way. So those are elevator shafts. We might have a mission giver room. We might have a treasure room. We might have a pickup room. We might have a secret room. Um, there's all sorts of different properties that go within them. Once we've got that flow graph, we go to our editor, we load that flow graph, then we give it a deterministic seed and click OK and the tools go ahead and build that environment for us. So now, an artist... So an artist or a designer could absolutely build this. There's no reason why they couldn't, but there's a lot to do here. So you've got to connect walls, you've got to put lights in, you've got to place NPCs. Uh, even some kind of technical things. We've got to place uh, atmosphere areas. We have our room system. We have a power system. And one of the problems with that is that, it, it, one, it's a little prone to error. So like, oh, if I forgot my link, I didn't name it right or whatever. Um, or I used an art kit that the art team wasn't quite ready for, things like this. So it kind of mitigates that problem. But you can see there's very meaningful content. And we've got 
you know, a level of like Port Olisar already generated within a couple minutes. And again, design or an artist could absolutely do this, but again, we've got to fill a massive amount of content here. So he explores around a little bit. Um, we can see that there was, a, there was a shop earlier. I think we might have gone through Cassaba, check that out. And the other thing about it is a lot of these sort of systems will only generate like a certain one floor. But again, if we put like a, uh, like a stairs uh, node within it, we're going to get different, uh, different levels. So here we load a different flow graph. This one is uh, a different procedural seed, and it builds up right again. So again, we can regenerate and regenerate and regenerate so many different sets of these interiors. All right, so that's the second piece of the puzzle. And the third piece of the puzzle, and one of the more exciting ones, you want to run the next video, is integrating it into our planet ecosystems. So the ecosystems, and what happens in this video is we're changing some of the properties just off screen of the ecosystem scattering. So it actually scatters all of these assets. So again, the cities plus the interiors within them and it integrates them seamlessly into the R, uh, R Corp cities. So you can see there's Area 17 in the background, kind of looks like LA with the smog. Um, but we changed some of these different properties and you can see the scattering happens over and over. So we're about to hit Hurston here. I'm gonna go ahead and give it back over to Chris, but I really hope you guys enjoyed the tools and really thank the team for working on that stuff. station, looked down at our corp, then quantum travel, flew through the space, we haven't done any loading, it's all in the same star system, and now uh, we're uh, in orbit, like high orbit actually, well, quite a ways out from uh, Hurston, uh, which is another planet inside the Stanton system, Art Corp was owned by, is owned by Art Corp. In the Stanton system, the UE had leased each one of the major Earth-type planets to different corporations. In this case, it's Hurston Dynamics, uh, which primarily is a weapons manufacturer. And Hurston itself is the kind of, it, it's the sort of planet that is what happens when there is no regulation and there's no environmental protection. So it's probably uh, going to be like China in 100 years or America after the EPA has been dismantled. Uh, but uh, so let's just head down. Uh, and, uh, you know, this will be an example of a different style of planet and uh, you know ecosystem biome, and it's still we're still early days on this because obviously uh, you know we're still getting three three zero out views of the environment, and the sort of pr procedural uh, planet team have been working on ArcCorp and uh, Hurston because they finished all their three zero stuff, and this is we're preparing for the next uh, major release, um, all this stuff, but there's still a ways to go. So remember, all this is work in progress, and there'll be a lot. It'll be a lot better and cooler. Uh, when you actually get your hands on it um, in the future, so we're just gonna we're just gonna do a short distance uh, short distance quantum travel. So we actually do allow we have two kinds of quantum travel in three zero and beyond. One is a long distance one, like the one we went between Arc Corp and Hurston between major celestial bodies, and then we have short distance quantum travel that allows you to navigate around or circumnavigate um, large celestial bodies. So like here, we're just gonna come much closer up to. Uh, a, uh, the kind of sort of low, or low orbit gateway into, uh, into Hurston. So I'll let Glenn take us down with his consummate flying skills.
Yeah, so uh, you know the the the, the yeah, German engine team that does all the procedural planet stuff has uh, been adding obviously a lot of stuff to the procedural planet tech. Um, the oceans have all been ported over to GPU, and ultimately we're not doing it here, but um, you know there, there actually has if we get low enough, you'll probably see there's it's full wave uh, simulation. And we get low enough, we want to have the thing where the wake from the ship creates waves. Not, that's not in yet, but we will be doing that at some point. Yes. Well, as you know. But we're heading in our way to Lawville, which is the uh, the main landing zone on Hurston. So. Uh, And as we sort of build this out in the future, there'll be a lot more sort of mining infrastructure. This is basically an area that uh, Hurston sort of strip mined for all the minerals and creating its weapons and its sort of factories that we'll see, we'll get to in a bit. But uh, as we move forward, we've just sort of begin the beginning of fleshing out sort of the secondary locations and objects. Uh, we're going to add things like, you know, big, you know, macro vehicles that would be excavating dirt and stuff. And, uh, give it a, uh, a lot more variety because Sirson's going to have quite a few more ecosystems than we're showing right here. But uh, let's head up towards Sirson. Uh, you can actually see in the distance the the big Sirson dynamic. It's sort of like the Tyrell building from Blade Runner. So that's the main uh, area. And actually, when you land in Sirson, that's where you're likely to land. And it has all these beautiful. Uh, shops inside and it's all nice but the outside of it's all kind of smog and factories and polluted air so let's sort of fly up through and again uh lawville's built using using the same tech it's a different kind of building set uh for a lot of it but it's using the same sort of distribution tech that we do uh to 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 sort of build out a city at a a realistic scale for the for the ships that we have in the games, so, you know, which is kind of important for our game because we want to have everything feel real, visceral, tactile. And you can sort of appreciate just the sheer scale of these planets because you know, off in the distance, Hurston didn't look very big, and now we're flying through it, uh, and you know, it's. Uh, yeah, these are pretty tall, big buildings. Glenn likes to show off. <laughs> so let's let's sort of head to the uh, outskirts um, outside the city because we want to sort of give you a sense of kind of 
what it's like in the ecosystems outside, and then also the sense of scale that you get. Because uh, you know, when you're flying around, you're moving pretty fast. I mean, we're flying at um, you know, a pretty uh, fair clip relatively. I don't think they'd like you flying around, um, say, Frankfurt at this speed, just above it. Um, but to give you the sense of being able to you know, fly over a planet and then get down on the ground, it's all seamless and also all the details. So we'll just go out here beyond uh, the main city areas and uh, find a landing spot. one that's not rock. There you go. So here we are, we're down on the ground, and you actually can sort of see the large uh, structures off in the distance, which maybe didn't look so big when we were flying over them, but really actually are quite massive. Um, and this is kind of like the kind of tundra area outside Lawville. Um, and let's, uh, let's go for a little run. And again, this is sort of what our goal is, is to try to kind of deliver the kind of, you know, on foot, first person, crisis level of detail for the environments uh, that you're in, but, you know, doing a lot of it procedurally and, uh, you know, on a planetary scale. So it's, it's quite challenging, uh, but I'm you know, very confident that we're going to deliver all that goal. And, you know, the team we have doing it, who, you know, a lot of them were here giving a talk earlier, are incredibly talented. Um, and uh, I'm pretty excited by the potential. I mean, we've got a lot to go in terms of building further ecosystems, also creating fauna for planets. So there's a, there's a sense of wildlife. Some could be hostile, some could be passive. Uh, but you know, we essentially want to make these planets living places that feel visceral, that have their own identity. You know, when you go to Art Corp or you go to Hurston, they feel totally different. Uh, you know, they match with the sort of story and the history and the lore and they feel tactile, they feel like a place that you could visit, a place that you could go and tell stories of, and take uh, you know, pictures of, or share with your friends. So, someone's conveniently left us a knot. So, we can use that to get a bit closer into the city. You sort of can see the, the city stuff that seemed quite small as we flew over it. We're down on the ground and it's pretty huge. Oh, all right, let's see if. Oh, Glenn, you're just showing off now. Just a show off, Glad. <laughs> I don't think it's that good of a show off. So here we're sort of coming to the outskirts of one of the city, the uh, factory areas of Lawville.
Alright. And again, we just have the beginnings of sort of our MPC population system. So some of the other stuff besides the interior procedural stuff is, uh, you know, uh, longer term we're working on sort of a background crowd, crowd simulation system, a traffic simulation for ships coming and going in the background. Uh, yeah, that's, the knock says it's a little physics bugs going on. Um, then we have foreground NPCs that would be like mission givers that have their own full schedules and stuff like that. Um, but all the places will get populated and feel uh, like they're full of life. So you'll have a, you know, like I said, the whole goal is to have 90% NPCs to 10% players in the universe. <coughs> and when you come to a place like Lawville or a place like Art Corp, it has to feel like, you know, it has millions of people in it because these cities are of that scale and that's sort of what we're used to. And so we're working very hard to build background systems to be able to do that, scale it, create them on demand, and create a you know, realistic feeling location on whatever planet you're visiting. So as you can see, there's the Hurston Dynamics uh, you know, main building off in the distance. So it's a, uh, you know, again, that gives you a sense of like the scope and the scale of the city really is uh, compared to what we're doing now. And as I said, one of the things we're working on is fauna. So, uh, so these are the first. These are the Oni, the uh, cyphopods, Oni crabs. So they're little scavengers on um, Hurston. And there's quite a few other things that we're going to have on Hurston. We'll do it. Um, but in the, you'll have them running around and a bunch of other ones. But there you go. There's there's Lawville. There's Hurston. 